Number 15 says a 240 Newton sphere, 0 0.2 meters in radius, rolls without slipping 6 meters down a ramp that is inclined at 37 degrees with the horizontal. What is the angular speed of the sphere at the bottom of the slope if it starts from rest? So we have here that this is 37 degrees. 37 degrees. We know that the distance from here to here is uh, is six meters, six meters. So we need to know what the distance is from here to here, and the reason is because we need to know the potential energy of the system. So we'll do six uh, six times the sine of thirty-seven to find out the height, and we get that the height is equal to three point six one zero eight. We'll, we'll just stop there on our decimals. Um, 3.6108 is going to be the height. And so uh, now we can use our conservation of energy. So we can we can say that the potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy uh, rotational initial plus the kinetic energy um, uh, tangential initial is equal to all of these so we'll say we'll just say all of these and they're final so uh, one thing we know is that um, at the very beginning these are both zero so we get that the potential energy initial is equal to and then the potential energy in the final state is also equal to zero so uh, is equal to the kinetic energy rotational final and the kinetic energy translational final and so um, now we can just uh, break these down and try to see if we can use that information to solve for the final angular speed. So I'm going to replace each one of these terms with the definition of the term. So potential energy is mass times gravity times height, and that's going to equal one half of mv squared, which is the translational energy, and then we're going to add that to one half of the moment of inertia times the angular speed squared, which is the rotational kinetic energy. And you may remember from uh, the previous video on number 13, where we did the same exact equation, we can break I down into some constant times m r squared. And so we will carry everything else down, v squared m one half equals mgh. And so from algebra we know that every this is one term, this is another term. And so whenever both the terms have the same uh, things in it, we can factor those things out. So we can factor out the one half, we can factor out the mass. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So mgh equals one half times mass times v squared plus k times r squared times omega squared. And you might immediately see that the mass is on both sides being multiplied, so we can divide by the mass on either side and take it to the other side and it cancels itself out, so we can get rid of the mass. And we can also um, carry over our one half by multiplying both sides by two. So we get two times gravity times height equals v squared plus some constant times r squared times omega squared. And um, what we don't know here is we have two unknowns. We don't know what the the angular speed is, and we don't know what the velocity is. And so what we want to do is try to define one in terms of the other one. You might remember from the last chapter that the velocity equals equals the rotational speed times the radius. And so we can actually plug this in here. We can instead of velocity, we can we can plug that in there. So so velocity squared would equal this times r times omega times r. So that would equal omega squared times radius squared. So we'll get 2gh equals omega squared times radius squared plus plus k times radius squared times omega squared. Now we have another um, situation where we have a term here 
and a term here, and they both carry uh, similar things that we can factor out. And so what we would get is if we if we just factored out the the um, the angular speed, we get two times uh, gravity times height equals the angular speed squared times r squared plus k times r squared. And of course we could fi factor out the, r the r squared as well, but it, it makes no difference because we're not looking to separate the r squared for any reason. Now all we have to do is isolate uh, the angular speed. And so what we do is divide both sides by the term r squared plus k times r squared and we get the the angular speed squared and so we can solve the angular speed by taking the square root of that number and then that would that would cancel out the square there and that would be our angular speed now in the beginning we solved for the height saying that it was 3.6108 so if I plug that in we'll, we'll say 2 times gravity is 9.8 times 3.6108 divided by the radius squared which would be 0 0.2 squared plus k now remember k k is a number that I made up to make the algebra on these problems easier I'm not sure if anyone else does it like this or not but k is the number preceding mr squared so for this one k would equal 1 for this one k equals 2 fifths for this one k equals 2 thirds and for this one k equals 1 half and because I we can define i as equaling k times m r squared and that means uh, the only thing that we would need to change on each one of those was the the proportionality constant that we defined as k and so on this one the one we're doing here k is going to equal two fifths and so we would want to plug in uh, we said our equation is r squared plus k times r squared so we would put in two fifths times times 0 0.2 squared and this should all equal omega squared so you multiply 2 times 9.8 times 3.6108 and you get your, your uh, numerator is 70.77168 and divided by um, whenever you take the bottom uh, 0.2 squared plus 2 fifths times 0.2 squared and that doesn't look like a very good 5 I'll just switch that uh, you get 0 0.056 you plug that into the calculator and divide it it equals 1263.78 which, e which is equal to omega squared so we just want to take the square root of that number and we'll find our angular speed and that angular speed is 35.54968